Hey, good morning. Thank you very much for your punctuality. I hope that you are so cheerful and full of energy to start this week. And especially in the English class, I hope that you help me like you usually do with your entirely participation. Um, let me see, today we're gonna talk about an interesting topic, which is uh, polysemy, polysemy, and you will, uh, through the study of this topic, you will understand the complexity of the English language. And I hope that it's gonna be of help for you uh, to understand this language much better and easier. Some of you already, already do, and many of you are still in the process. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Okay, here we are. If you have your books, the Spotlight on Literature D, I want you to open it on pages 18 and 19, please. If you have it. If you don't, uh, you can uh, get all the copies of this class in the um, platform, Santillana, in Santillana in English, in the English part, in the English subject, you can find all of these documents if you want to check them out. Uh, we're gonna work in here and the class is gonna be uploaded in YouTube. But if you have the book, it's much easier and perfect to study. Polysemy, pages 18 and 19. I'm gonna present you today's agenda. We're gonna work on a reflection related to the value of sincerity. And then we're gonna go over the lesson. Easy peasy, two things to do today. So first I need someone to help me out with this. Help me reading and then mm -hmm. um, give me, okay, please. Sincer is some to be a problem for some people these days, but I prefer to be hated than be a false person who told lies. Thank you so much. Thank you. So anybody wants to make a comment of this? Because I think I think that you can relate to this quote about sincerity. Anybody, please? I will listen to three or four uh, comments, and then we're going to move to the class, to the topic. What do you think of this? Hello? All right, I'm gonna give you my opinion about it and then you can probably uh, relate with me, agree with me or totally disagree. And also you can give your points of view. Okay, sincerity seems to be a problem, it said for some people. Deep inside, many, many, many people uh, likes uh, sincerity and honesty. They want people come clean, but in reality, deep inside, you're asking it, but you don't really want to listen to the truth. Sometimes hearing the truth makes people feel uncomfortable with themselves. And this is a sensation or a feeling that people don't like to feel. That's why they sometimes prefer fake relationships. They prefer to have false friends, fake friends. They're just telling them what they want to listen to, but not the truth. So that's why, it, I don't know if you can relate to this, but when you are sincere, when you're totally honest, or like they say, you come clean every single time with people, they don't like you. They don't like to be around you because you are too sincere. And remember that people don't feel comfy with that. They are going around saying that they want to have uh, true friends, real friends, but in reality, that is not true. And people who are really sincere, got problems to hand out. Well, it also depends the way that you uh, tell the truth because you have to be polite. You don't have to be mean. Sincerity doesn't mean uh, to be mean. It's not a synonym. And this is what I think. Um, so anybody uh, wants to agree with me or disagree, please? 
teacher guy gave me my my opinion. Mm -hmm. A friend who shits on you that you in the back is not your friend. Mm -hmm. We must learn to implant trust and respect each other. Yeah, you have to learn how to uh, respect each other and also to tell the truth, to tell the truth all the time. And like I said, uh, being sincere doesn't mean to be mean. Sometimes truth is hurtful by nature, but it's not because you want to hurt your friends. You just want the best for them. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else? So how is that possible? Huh? I'm sorry. I agree with you, everything that you said. But in these times, like if you tell the truth, they're gonna be mad. And if you don't, they're gonna be mad too. So I prefer to be a honest person and to tell a lie because anyways, the people is gonna be mad and hate you. So yeah, just to feel good with me, with myself, I prefer to tell the truth always in a good way. Because if you're rude, it's disrespectful and that's not the point. That that's is not the point. point, yeah. Thank you so much, excellent opinion. So don't be rude, don't be mean, don't be rude every time that you wanna say the truth to your friends because you want to prove that you wanna help. You, you want to prove that you want to help them, not just criticize them. But people sometimes don't accept critic as a good thing. And it is, it is a good thing. Otherwise, you will never grow as a human being, as a person, as a citizen, as a cousin, as a whatever. You will never grow if you don't accept criticism from time to time. But constructive criticism. One more opinion, and then we move to the class. Well, we are in the class. So we're gonna move to the topic. One more. Um, me? Please. <laughs> okay. Um, I am. I am agree too with you because I think um when you are friend with someone, um you have to tell him or her the truth mm. because if you only say things that he or her wants um he don't grow um mm. for for himself her her um like a person like a son like a um so many things that he or her can grow in life so when you tell him the, the truth, um, some opinions, not, not, not in a mean way, but the truth. You, you, know, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I know what I, I, I hope really you, you, you understand me. But yeah, that, that, that's it, I guess. All right, thank you so much. So it says here, like in the quote says, sincerity seems to be a problem for some people these days. It can be a problem to come clean for yourself and also to other people to hear or listen to the truth. People don't like, deep inside, they don't want to listen to the truth. They don't really want it to. And they say, no, I just want to have close and clear friends with me, good friends, you know, with me. But in reality, it's not true. It is not true. But you guys, you guys, you seem to be very honest people. And so keep it on. The, the, the ones that say that you are uh, sincere all the time with your friends, but polite at the same time. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. And keep on that. Keep doing that. So then uh, on page 18, you have this very interesting. Uh, this is the boring part, the, the, the definitions of these words. But you will see that, that this uh, topic is kind of, a, kind of fun. And, and so interesting at the same time. You will understand many things of the English language because sometimes you see words, words in English in different contexts with different meanings. And you said, no, but this word doesn't mean that. It means something else, something different. And, and, and it's not that. The, the, the thing is that words have multiple meanings and that ability is called polysemy. 
Um, we have 116 students here and I can understand why it's so difficult for you to talk in the microphone. Remember that you're in class, you're here to learn. Um, and if you make mistakes, it's good. I mean, if you don't make mistakes right now, uh, when are you pretend to do them, to make mistakes? When, when you're working, when you are at your job? No, this is the time to correct yourselves. Make mistakes now so in the future you can learn from them and try to avoid them as much as you can. Okay, so let's see. Uh, somebody, well, I need actually two people. Uh, I need one to read the first part and the second part as well. Please, anybody, any volunteer? 116 students, at Me least teacher. one. Thank you very much. Um, 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 context. Uh, I finish in context, in the word context. Uh, let me see. Yes, excellent. Okay. Yes, in yes. linguistics, polysemy refers to the ability of a word or phrase to have multiple meanings. Polysemes, um, just like homonyms, words that are spelled and pronounced the same way but have different meanings, fall into the category of words that are hard to define semantically without context. Thank you very much. Sometimes in classes, students ask me, teacher, teacher, what is the meaning of the word? Then no, they, they, they tell me the word. And sometimes I ask them, mm, can you read it in a sentence, please? And, and it's not because I don't know. Well, sometimes I don't know, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I, I want to hear the context so I can give you a precise definition of the word or translate or translation of the word. Because those words are very difficult to interpret without context and why it's because they can mean different things and this is polysemy is the ability that the words have to possess or to have multiple meanings poly means multi and semi means meanings many meanings this is what the word polysemy means poly multiple semi meanings okay anybody to continue please with the example section somebody teacher can you hear me yeah i can hear you please help me out alex excellent uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry sorry, An sorry, example sorry. Of, don't worry An example of homonym is the word beer the animal and beer to carry Homonyms can be further divide, divide into homograph or words that are spelled identically but are pronounced differently. Examples of homographs are the words bass, the instrument, pronounced bass, and bass, the fish, pronounced bass. Ah, thank you so much. So you see, there's making a difference because you can confuse because the, 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 the concepts are so close. There's a slight difference between polysemes and homonyms, but homonyms are words that they got the same spelling, the same, they have the same pronunciation, but they have different meanings. And we have two examples in here, bear the animal and bear to carry things and they mean exactly the same thing. Bear, you see the, the spelling is the same, B-E-A-R, the animal, and B-E-A-R, to carry, they are exactly the same thing. They look the same, they are pronounced the same, but in the context, they may have different, different meanings, and those are homonyms. Homonyms can be divided into homographs as well. Homographs are words that they are spelled the same, but sometimes they don't have the same pronunciation. Like in here, you see uh, the musical instrument, B-A-S-S, is pronounced bass. And the fish, the type of fish is a spell, like the instrument, B-A-S-S, but the pronunciation is bass. Bass, 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 but they look exactly the same. Those are homographs. They share only the spelling. They may have different pronunciation and for sure, different meanings. 
And you will see, uh, but teacher, if polysemes are not the same as homonyms and it's very difficult to confuse with those terms, how can I know which one is a polyseme and which one is a homonym? And we will see it in advance. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Guys, if you have any questions, ask now. This is your opportunity. Okay. Tell me. No, no, no. All right. Next, I need two more people. Two more. Me, teacher. Okay, uh, okay. Abrego, you're Jared. gonna be the first to read, and then who's who also spoke? There was a lady's voice. Me, teacher. Okay, you will be second. Thank you. Okay. You will read, my okay. dear Abrego, until origin. Origin here. Origin. Origin from but to origin. I don't. Ah, uh, okay. But unlike homonyms and homograph, do I start now? Yeah, please, please. Okay. But like homonyms and homograph, polysemes are bar part of the same semantic field, meaning that all the meanings of a polysemy are related to the same basic definition of the word. These are different in the sense that they share a common etymology or origin. Thank you so much. So here you have the difference between polysemes and homonyms. A teacher, the same word has the same difficult about different meanings. So how is it possible that they have differences? The difference is here. Homonyms are words. Remember, homonyms are words that they share a spelling, pronunciation, and they have different meanings. The same happens with polysemes. But the difference here is that polysemes belong to the same semantic field. Homonyms don't belong, don't necessarily belong to the same semantic field. We will see some examples to clarify this concept, but I want you to hear it right now. Homonyms are words, they share pronunciation, spelling, and different meanings. Whereas polysemes, they have the same characteristics, but the difference in here is that they belong to the same semantic field. And what is a semantic field? You might be wondering. Do you have any idea, my friends? And you can Google it right now and come up with the answer. What is a semantic field? What is a semantic field? Words that belong of a same category, maybe? Yeah, it is, exactly. You have one concept and every word that is related to the same concept, to the same meaning is uh, corresponding to the same field. Like you say, categories. If they belong to the same category, they will be related to the same semantic field. And this is the difference between homonyms and polysemes. Polysemes, they have to belong to the same semantic field, whereas homonyms, no. And we will see the examples. Anybody else who helped me with the second part of the paragraph? Me, teacher. Please. Okay, an example of a policy in the word crawl, which means to move slowly on your hands and knees, but also means a style of swimming that looks like crawling, both meanings are different, but at the same time relate to the same word. By discovering polysemes, we can infer the meaning of words we might not know. Thank you so much. So you see, sometimes you, you are reading something in English and you um, come across with a word that you don't understand and you don't want to look them up on the dictionary or on internet, and you try to infer the meanings. And that is going to help you out. Because like in setting here, the word crawl, the original meaning is to move slowly on your hands and knees like a baby, a baby does. Babies do this, they crawl on the floor. When they can't walk, they crawl. And there's also a swimming style that is called crawling. 
And what is the relationship in here? Because they look exactly the same. The swimming style looks like you're crawling inside the water. And that's why they correspond to the same semantic field because the origin or the essence of the original meaning, it's similar to the other one. And we will see some examples right here, examples of homonyms. All of the words we're gonna see right here, right now are homonyms, not polysyms. For example, we have the word key, key. In a regular dictionary, in a regular dictionary online or on paper, you will find 17 definitions of the word key. And you see now that word is not that complex, but it's very complex. Can you imagine yourself uh, remembering 17 definitions of the same word? But I have provided three, so you can see uh, the difference. I, I need one person to help me out, please with the three definitions of the word key. Well, the three that I have found, we have more. Me. Please. Small pies of shape in metal with incisions cut to, cut to fit the, the words of a particular rock, which is inserted into a rock, into a lock, and turning to open or close it. B. B. Oh, I, I, I made a mistake there. It's a G, a group, a group. A group of knot based on a particular knot and comprising a skill, uh, regulated as forming the tonal basis, basis of a piece or pages of music. Mm -hmm. C. A age of several bottoms on a on a panel for operating a computer, type rating or telephone. Thank you very much. So in the first definition, we're talking about a small piece of shaped metal, which incisions um, well, incisions can open locks or close or open, like they say. And B is basically a, a scale for regarding musical notes. And the other one is a each button on your computer. So if you illustrate, if you see the illustration of the concept, it will be much easier. This is the first key, the one, the item that you use to open or close doors. This is the second. This is more about people that is into music, playing instruments. Uh, you are so related to this. They're keys. Those are keys, musical keys. And the bottoms the bottoms in your keyboard. That's why it's a keyboard, because it's a board that contains a lot of keys. And also in pianos, in the piano or in the keyboard, you uh, call each button, each item, key. You see the same word with the same pronunciation, with the same spelling, but with different, different uh, meanings, different uses. Uh, questions about the first example? I think I think that when you see the illustrations, it is easier to understand this. The second example of homonyms. Another volunteer. Teacher in Spanish, do things have the same name? Yeah, they do. They do. In, in Spanish, the same. Uh, let me see, uh, Diana Giselle, do you want to ask me something or do you want to comment? No, teacher, something? sorry, accident. Ah, okay, but 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 now uh, that, that you're here sorry, and I sorry, can hear sorry. your voice, uh, help me please with the three definitions of the word mall. Uh, the number in parentheses, number 12, means uh, how many definitions can you find in a dictionary if you look that up? But you will read only three. Okay, Giselle. Sorry, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, no, you're going to help me reading. Okay. Mole, an animal that burrows in the ground, and a spy that burrows into an organization. Mm -hmm. A pigment spot mark or a small permanent protuberance on the human body, especially. All right. Thank you so much. So you see, the word mole is a homonym as well. 
uh, the three concepts that I have here, uh, they have the same spelling, the same pronunciation, mold, and in the dictionary you can find 12. But like I said, you will read only three. And here you have the first concept is this animal. This is a mole, uh, an animal that burrows into the ground. They build some clusters underground. I don't think we have moles in El Salvador, or at least I have never seen one. And also the second is an spy in an organization. This is a very graphic expression of what the word mole means. It's an spy, it's an infiltrated guy who works in a company and then he double crosses the company. Let's say that this guy, this mall in here works for Pepsi, but he is collecting some secrets, some secrets of the company to sell them to Coca-Cola, to, to, to give an example. And the other, the pigment on your skin is this. This protuberance on your face, on your body, on your arms, in any part of your body is called mole. Mole, mole, mole. Any questions about this word? Or is it crystal clear? It's clear, teacher. Thank you. So then let's move to examples of policies. And, and you will see the difference. The only difference in here, remember and keep it in mind, is that they correspond to the same field. Probably those in here, well, no, actually, no, there's not a connection in, in, in meanings, I mean, in the semantic field. But it, polysemes do. Polysemes do. Someone who can help me out with this? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I can read it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, okay, Hernandez. Okay. Hernandez. okay. <laughs> Please. Uh, hand, the end part of a person arm beyond the wrist, including the palm, fingers, and the thumb. Uh -huh. Be a pointer on a clock or watch indicate, indicating the pacing of units of time. Thank you so much. So this one, this one corresponds to the same semantic field and you might be wondering why. Well, the definition of hand is very clear. Well, it sounds kind of uh, sophisticated because you know what hand is, but when you hear the words, the end part of a person's arm beyond the wrist, including the palm, fingers and thumb, it sounds like, oh, you see, very academic, but this is basically your hand is in front of you. And the pointer of a clock, why do you think those words are polysemes and not just homonyms? So give me your opinions. Why these words belong to the same semantic field? Why? Why do you think so? Do you want me to choose a name? Um, I guess because they are related. In the case of the pointer of a clock, a uh -huh. hand is used to point, you know, the fingers of your hand, use uh -huh. them to point. And yes. the, uh, yeah, I guess that that's- No, all. no, continue, continue. You were gonna say something <laughs> else. Yeah, I, I, I just, I was, I was just gonna repeat what I said, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, but you did it awesome. Well, you did it awesomely, awesomely. So anybody wants to rephrase uh, your classmate of participation? Do you agree, disagree? Yareni says that she doesn't know. But Yareni, now you have heard uh, another um, comment, another opinion about this. So do you want to add something? No, I agree with her. <laughs> what do you agree with? What do you exactly, what part of her explanation do you really agree with? The thing that she said that the finger point, or I don't know. I no, don't that, know. that's exactly the base of this. Oh, okay, that. Okay, thank you very much. So this is exactly the connection here. The original uh, purpose of your fingers, uh, of your hands. Well, you grab things with your hands, of course, but you also point things. 
and this is basically what um, I mean in the clock. The clock doesn't have a doesn't have a body, right? But what can be like uh, their hands is the the arrows. Those are arrows. They have three arrows: one to mark the seconds, the minutes, and the hours. And they're like some sort of fingers. They have to point something. And this is the connection you have. It's kind of deep. Uh, you have to think out, think out a little bit. But the connection, the connection is is in front of your eyes. The other policy. Anybody else? Maybe a boy. I feel that I haven't heard a boy's voice in, in this class. Well, I, I, I yeah, I remember one. One of the boys, Axel, and somebody else. Uh huh. A boy who helped me reading these definitions. What uh, wood? A uh -huh. pronunciation wood. The material made from trees. A geographical area with many trees. Uh -huh. Now here the connection, thank you very much. Now the connection here is clearer. You have the word wood. Wood is the material that people use to make different stuff. Um, and you see that there, yeah, your table probably is made of wood, your chair is made of wood, or you see. And then you have the geographical area with many trees. It's like a, some, I don't know, I don't really know. I'm not really expert on geography, uh, but forests are the same of woods. I think there's a slight difference between woods and forest. But for me, for me, for my personal point of view, it's the same thing, a place full of trees. That is what it is. But if you are an expert in geography and you're studying all of these phenomena, uh, you will probably get the difference. But this is what it is, the material and the place or the area that is full of trees. I think you won't have any questions about this one. Uh, help me please reading these two examples. Anyone else? Linette, Daniela Linette. Emmanuel Cortez says, Daniela Linette. Daniela Linette, are you here? No, no, it's the one. Um, I can read again. Please. Okay. Uh, ring a band on a finger and be something circular in shape. Thank you so much. So you said the ring, you are talking about that particular item that bride and groom exchange during the wedding ceremony or when they propose, you see, when the boyfriend propose uh, he got a, a ring like the one you can see on your screens. And also anything, anything with that shape, uh, the circular shape can be considered or called a ring. And I have chosen a delicious example, onion rings. Onion rings. Do you have any questions? Oh, and, and I don't need to explain what is the semantic feeling here or do I? No, you better do it yourselves. I need somebody here, someone, a boy or a girl, doesn't matter, who can give me the, the, the connection between these words. What is the semantic feeling here? The shape of them. Exactly, know. yeah. That's it, very easy, very simple. Thank you very much. It's the shape, the circular shape. And then um, the last one, you might say, teacher, but you're just sharing a pair of words. Is there any possibility that we have policy with more than two definitions? And I, I went ahead, I went ahead and I thought, mm, my students probably aren't gonna ask me that. So I, I look for a word. Yeah, and they are uh, the same way, Rebecca. That's why it is, is, it's very, very, very easy to confuse homonyms and polysyms because they have the same characteristics, same spelling, same pronunciation. But the difference is the semantic field, remember that. So crane, we have three uh, definitions here and the three of them correspond to the same semantic field.
Okay, uh, anybody wants to help me out reading? Me, me, teacher. Me, oh. me. Who's me? Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, so sometimes for me, it's very hard to know who's talking and, and that really sucks. I really, really enjoy uh, calling my students by name, but because of Zoom, <laughs> Oh well, no. Also, that also uh, because I just see your your last names, and because you are following the format that your teachers have provided, uh, last names, and then your names. But would you like to say your names before you participate, please? Because I want to 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 call you by names. Please, please. I am Diana. <laughs> uh, Diana, yeah. Okay, Dianita. Yeah, I recognize your voice, but either way, you have to tell me who you are. Thank you, Diana. Go okay. ahead. Um, a, a bearded with a long neck. B, a type of construction equipment which looks like it has a long neck. C, stretch out one's body or neck in order to see something. Thank you so much. So, and Diana, do you know who also spoke at the same time as you did? No, I, I didn't, but maybe Edwin, I Edwin. don't know. Was it Edwin? Edwin, are you here? Long time not here. <laughs> no, okay. So now uh, just by reading, just by reading to the definitions provided for the word crane, you can easily tell me what is the semantic feel here? The neck. The neck, exactly. Thank you so much. And you can see that in the pictures. Crane, uh, if you are Kung Fu Panda's fans, you will immediately know who the character was, Crane. In Kung Fu Panda is uh, one of the main characters, one of the five. Uh, it's a bird with a long neck. Also the construction equipment got a long neck. And the other one is an action to, to well, not to twist. If you twist, you're gonna die. It, to move your neck in different directions to, to see something like, like the guys in the, in the picture. Yeah, like, like Rebecca said, each time we talk, we can say our names. Yeah, that, that would be good. Like, like Rebecca is, is suggesting. So we have four uh, minutes to go. Uh, I don't know if you have questions. Do you have any questions, my friends? Can I ask you? Okay, let me see. I will find your names here. Oscar Lopez. Oscar Lopez, are you uh, here? Are you online, Oscarito? Not really. Carla Solano? Uh, hello. Hello. So can you please tell me what is the definition of polysemy? Definition of polysemy. Eh, se lo voy a medio decir porque no puedo. Okay, doesn't matter. Try. Eh, eh, is a word mm -hmm. with um, with eh, no sé cómo decir muchos. With many, many significant meanings. Yeah. Significant. <laughs> that, that's exactly that's exactly what it is. Words with multiple meanings. Anybody else wants to say something else of the definition? Do you want to add? Do you want to rephrase what she said? What polysemy really is? Hmm? 
Nope. I was I was very confused for the last picture because that kids are from a tribe, and I I I I confused myself. Okay, no, but don't focus on the kind of guys. Just focus on the move of your neck. So it's that when you move your neck in different directions to see, to see better. Koto says, those meanings belong to the same semantic field. Yeah, yeah, it's true, uh, Daniel. So this is basically polysemy. Polysemy is the ability of the word to have multiple meanings. And you get confused with homonyms because homonyms are exactly the same thing. But the difference here is like Daniel says, so polysemes, and homonyms differ that they belong to different uh, semantic fields. So my friends, uh, thank you very much for your um, attention and your participation as well. It's always a pleasure for me to try to teach you something. Have a good day and we will uh, try to review this topic next week because on Thursday or Wednesday, you're having my test on Santillana Pleno. Thank you, guys. Thank you, teacher.